In today's Alter Call tutorial, I'm gonna help you understand how to pick the right sounds so you're not bored playing the same thing all the time, but you're also enhancing and not distracting quiet moments of prayer or response at your church. Let's check it out. So one of the big benefits of using software for your Worship Keys rig is a lot of control and flexibility when it comes to the sounds that you use. That was the inspiration for this video on how to approach moments of prayer, underscoring, or altar call at your church. We're gonna give you one progression in today's video. We use three different combinations of sounds to highlight how the sounds that you use for that progression can affect the mood and the impact. Let me start off by showing you, it's probably my go-to piano and pad combination for underscoring. Now, if you're new to underscoring, this is the best place to start because it's familiar, it doesn't distract or get in the way, and people are just sort of comfortable with it. It's, it's almost like elevator music, and that sounds like a negative thing. People generally talk about elevator music as something bad, but when it comes to playing underneath somebody, you wanna blend in, you want it to feel familiar. So this is a piano and pad combination for underscoring. Let me show you. So again, this is a really familiar and safe type of sound to bring to a moment of underscoring or altar call because it's familiar. It's not getting in the way or distracting. People aren't gonna be like, oh, what am I hearing? They're just gonna naturally accept that as part of the moment. So next, let me give you an example of something that's just a little bit different. We're gonna swap out the acoustic piano sound for an electric piano. Now, if you're playing lots and lots and lots of underscoring, you don't wanna just always use the exact same sounds, just like you don't always want to use the exact same progressions. So let me show you an electric piano and pad combination so you can hear how it sort of fills the same similar sort of space. There's just something a little bit different about it. So generally, electric pianos are a little bit more mellow than an acoustic piano sound. Depending on the amount of time that you're gonna be underscoring, it can be a great idea to start with something really chill, like an electric piano, and then introduce an acoustic piano later on during that time. Or if it's just for a little while and you want to do something different, an electric piano is a safe, but still interesting musical choice. Now, lastly, let me give you something that's a little bit more different and a little bit more dynamic than just replacing the acoustic piano instrument. Here, we're gonna get rid of the piano instrument entirely. We've got a couple different types of worship pad sounds and then a synth bass layered underneath that we can bring in to add movement and energy to the progression. Now this is gonna be a little bit bigger when that synth bass comes in. At the same time, there's a lot less going on in the right hand, so you're not gonna be getting in the way of what your speaker is saying, simply because you're not taking up the same frequency range. Let me show you.
This type of patch combination is also really great when you plan to be improvising with other members of your band. Because that synth bass is so strong and definite, you can dictate the chord changes really clearly to the rest of your band and to the congregation, but leave lots of room in the top end for maybe some finger picking on acoustic guitar, or if your electric guitarist wanted to do some ambient lead parts or swells. So removing that lead instrument element of any type of piano sound at all oftentimes leads to new creative directions for you and for the rest of your band while you're underscoring. Now that we've talked about the sounds and how they can impact your times of underscoring, check out the links in the description to more videos to help you have go-to keys progressions and theory in your back pocket so that you're never left without knowing what to do the next time you need to play during altar call. If you're a Worship Keys player, be sure to subscribe because we release new videos every week to help you become a better musician. Thanks for watching.